top, middle, or perhaps even bottom of the morning to you, our enthusiasts. This is issue three of Exploring Our Packages with the Chipmunk. We'll be covering assorted functions and data sets. I'm Dr. Mark Williamson for the Bird Corps. Today's packages will come in two flavors. The first are assorted functions, starting with beginner, going through guff, metabolic, rfast1, and rfast2. The other flavor is miscellaneous data sets, all the way from baby names to BED, billboard, chronosphere, coronavirus, outbreaks, random names, stats2 data, and USA. So let's take a look at some summaries here. Over with beginner, this is useful functions for our beginner. So says, does what it says. Now guff stands for generally useful function. So it's another set of functions for use in R. Now metabolic is a little bit different. This is actually a data set and set of functions from a medical meta-analysis. Meta so we're mixing things up a little here, but it's a pretty fun data set and analyses. R fast is a collection of, you guessed it, fast functions for data analysis. R fast too is unsurprisingly the same sort of thing. Moving on to our data sets, baby names is, unsurprisingly, US baby names. BED stands for the Biological Entity Dictionary. It's not so much a dictionary as an interface, but we'll, we'll look at that in a little more detail. Billboard is Billboard Hot 100, ranging all the way from 1960 to 2016, so a lot of songs, and in fact, even things like lyrics. Chronosphere, these are Earth system history variables. Coronavirus, unsurprisingly, is it, uh, data on the coronavirus. These are daily case summaries. Outbreaks, these are empirical or simulated disease outbreak data from a variety of uh, diseases. Rand names is fake user data creation. Then stats2 data is data set from the textbook stats2. And then file USA is updated US state facts and figures. Turning now, let's look at each of these packages at a glance through either a PDF or a vignette. Well, what do we have here? Well, why? It's beginner. Function for our beginners. So let's jump right into the reference manual. So they're useful functions using hints for plotting. So not the most here, but definitely things with plotting, things like that, as well as other random data sets. So not too bad. You can even write stuff. So, okay. Let's over for general useful functions. And these are simple base like R functions. So let's take a look at the reference manual. So it looks like pretty, pretty short here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So things like aggregating, counting, get leftmost, rightmost characters of a string. So pretty standard error, so pretty pretty simple stuff, and then inverse of in pipe. Okay, not too bad. Let's go over to metabolic. This will be a little bit more meat on it. So this is from a, a meta-analysis published in Medicine, Science, and Sports, and Exercise. Uh, it's effectiveness of HIIE versus MICT, improving carbon metabolic risk factors, so, so and so and so, a meta-analysis. So let's take a look at this. Looks like there is a variety of things going on. You can build this gopher diagram, graph rule overview, report, HTML report, whatever. Where's the thing we want? Uh, here we go. Here's a data set that's for reproducing this, which is helpful. Now uh, you can combine subgroups. And then here's the big one, perform meta-analysis. Plot results, et cetera, et cetera. All right, moving on here. We've seen what we need to. R fast, bunch of utility functions, bunch of tests, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at here. Looks like a lot of things. You can see a lot of statistical tests, like events of covariance, ANOVA, backward selection regression, Different things with columns and rows, correlations, a lot, a lot here. We could spend probably a couple of sessions just diving into all these, but well, we won't. In, instead, we'll go on to RFAS2. RFAS2, electric boogaloo. RFAS2, more of the same. Anyways, same sort of thing, functions, for different selection, like backwise selection, binomial regression, a lot of statistical analyses, again, more column row stuff, Poisson regression, a, a lot going on here. Okay, with that, I think we can switch over to more R data sets. So we'll get started here with baby names. So it can be a data set of baby names. Looks like there's applicants, baby names, births, and life tables. So this is probably the big one, but there's more data here. Moving on, we're just kind of jump through here. This biological entity directory, it connects apparently to the Neo4j database, providing mapping between different identities of biological entities. So there's a lot going on here. And I think a lot of it really is behind the, you're not able to directly access unless you sort of connect, but here we go. All right, next, billboard. Again, we're just, we'll just sort of breeze through some of these ones if they're pretty self-evident. So there's lyrics, playlist, track data, and then this is the main thing, the songs, 100 songs each year. Chronosphere, this is, again, that Earth history variables, and it's not particularly clear. I think there's a lot of functions to do things with it, and I, again, it's more of a, I think you have to access, you, you, you connect to a data set somewhere else. But uh, just for completeness, let's look at this nice vignette, because as you know, I love vignettes. Okay, you can install, implement classes, so a lot going on here. Uh, we're not going to get through all of it, but if you really want to use Earth Station variables, this would be your resource. Okay, plunging right along. 
This is coronavirus data sets. It's a daily summary by state and province. So if I just look here, it's going to be coronavirus. That's the main thing, data set, and then there's a few other quick functions. Outbreaks is a collection of disease outbreak data. So let's take a look here. These are going to be collection data sets. So we have things from COVID-19. We have dengue. We have Ebola, flu, rabies, SARS, Zika. Great little collection of data sets here. Rand name, so this is, provides access to fake user data, so things like social security numbers, gender location, address, nationality, etc. This is pretty pretty straightforward. Yeah, all you, all you do is just one function, Rand names, and it generates it. Simple, what you need it for. Stats 2 data, this is premium, premium stuff. It's all sorts of different data sets, so airlines, alfalfa, bee stings, cows and bird nests, cancer survival, it get, goes on and on. So if you need data sets to explore stuff with, give examples of it, this is the place to go. Really great stuff here. Okay, then there's USA, updated state facts and figures. So this is useful for more uh, geographical, ecological sort of study stuff. So there's city names, counties, people, states, abbreviations, territories, zip codes. So any sort of geographical information you need, you can pull out here. It's great if you need data to eventually produce graphs, in, or sorry, maps in R. Okay, let's turn back to some examples in R. Examples in R? Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. Here we are in lovely, poignant R Studio to go through these packages. Again, if you haven't already installed and loaded, do that now. I've already done that. So let's dive right in to Beginner. So let's create some data sets and then we can plot it. So this is plotting and we added these error bars using Beginner. So kind of interesting. Maybe we wouldn't probably do this in most plots, but hey, there we have it. You can also have a data frame, I think likes a linear model, and we can plot that. There we go. This is kind of nice. It has all sort of your summary statistics right here. It's not amazing, but <clears throat> for quick little functions, great. And here's some plotting uh, pair data. So there we go. Trend, switching over to generally useful functions, we can create vectors and do things like get standard uh, getting variance, standard deviation, standard error. So there we go. You can do if we have, and this is right from their examples, if you have not a numbers, they'll, you see here, this is like not a cool or not a number, it'll show up in, when it tries to calculate things. And then you can also compare stuff and you can remove not numbers. And then uh, if it looks like SE leaves out, but if you don't remove them, it, you know, defaults to NA. So things going on there, metabolic. So this is interesting stuff. We're going to run this. This is again from the example and we're gonna run it and plot it bunch of things. So it's doing a bunch. It's performing meta-analysis, sensitivity analysis down here. Okay, doing more stuff, more stuff. It's done. Did it give me a plot? Okay, it gave me a variety of plots ending up with... Okay, well, this is sort of like these meta-analysis results. A little, little messy here, but <clears throat> we'll, we'll take it for now. Okay, our fast. Here is an example. I believe it's looking at ANCOVA. So we run here and it gives a quick ANCOVA with F values and P values. Our FAST2, we're again gonna use an example, create some mock data, make a, this is principal components regression, or PCR, principal components analysis. So we get our different axes and so, so forth, of our principal component axes. All right, that's done with the sets of functions. Let's look at data sets. Here's the baby names, just look at the head of the one variable baby names. Okay, starts in 1880 with Mary, Anne, Emma. Non-surprisingly, those sounds like 1880 names. Let's look at the life table head. Okay, it looks like there's a lot of interesting data here. We could do life table analysis, but we're not doing that here. Now, with BED, that you need to connect to this Neo4j database and you need to establish connection remote things, but one thing we can do is we show the data model. And that pops up here is an HTML. You can see sort of the workings of how this works. But I digress, we'll go back here and move on to billboard. <coughs> so let's look at the hot 20. This is starting in 1916, one to 20. Okay, you know, we've got Elvis, Jimmy Jones, Everly Brothers, etc. But what if we want to look at, say, the top 10 for 1990, the year of my birth? Okay, mm, nothing terribly great. I mean, Blaze of Glory is probably the best song out on here, even though it's 10, but that's just my subjective 1990s opinion. And again, if we want to look at lyrics, turns out there's lyrics. You can actually have all sorts of lyrics here. Okay, on to Chronosphere. So this is just, again, from examples in the PDF. You can plot. Uh, just some different map variables. Okay, coronavirus, instead of doing a headless, take a look at a summary. So we see it gives us dates, province, country, latitude, longitude, type, and then cases. 
So then if we take, look at the head by US, just look at the first six or so, here we go, starts in 2020, January, and then the number of cases. Okay, now let's go to outbreaks. Again, this is a collection of data sets, so let's look at the first one. They're small enough that I can just run them here. Here's the dates, the number in bed, and a couple lessened. So, any little data set of outbreaks. Let's look at smallpox, I think this is a little bit bigger, just 32 data. So, date of onsets, age, gender, vaccinated, uh, I think this vaccine scar, I'm not sure with FTC and then compound, but here we go. Okay, random name, so you should run this and then give the number. I'm just do 10, and it gives all sorts of things. Again, this is a tibble, if you remember from the tidyverse, that's a sort of tidy table. And we see all sorts of information here, and actually more variables that we can't quite see. All right, moving on, there's data from stats to data. Look at the dinosaur data set. And this looks like iridium levels and source and depth, I think, of like, fossils. Here's data from whether or not, I think, waiters put a joke on their, on their receipt, and if they get a tip or not. Okay, and finally, here's USA, and let's just look at states for USA. You can get the states, their abbreviation, their FIPS code, region, division, etc. So, great stuff there. Good stuff, good stuff. Next, let's consider a fairly subjective score and a little bit less subjective classification. With beginner, that's a good place to begin, I'll give it a two acorns out of five. It's, you know, good for beginning things, but I wouldn't use it beyond that, so it's a beginner function set. Guff, same sort of thing, it's more for formatting. Again, I'll give it a two. Useful, but not something I'm gonna use every day, or even very much. At a bulk, I'm gonna give it three, because it's pretty interesting, especially if you wanna do meta-analyses and it gives a great sort of example. And this, of course, though, is special use. You're not gonna use it for everything. RFAST and RFAST2, I'm gonna both give three out of five. Definitely useful functions, though I'm used to using sort of statistical tests using other packages, so I probably won't use this all the time, but they're pretty solid sets of analysis packages. Sidling on over to our data sets. Baby names, three out of five, it's a data set, it's okay. BD, I'm giving this a one because it's more of an interface. You have to set up a username, password, all these things. So it's not a very good plug and play. I'm sure it's pretty useful and interesting if you really want to devote the time, but for my gut, not right now. Billboard, two. It's, you know, pretty trivial data. I'm not going to use it for any real analysis, but kind of fun. Chromosphere, again, it's more of a interface, and this is not the kind of data that I'm going to be really using. I I'd hope it'd be kind of fun to plug and play, but it's pretty involved to get at. Chromevice is three, useful data. Use a data set, but nothing amazing. Outbreaks, I'm giving this a four because it has a data set collection and a lot of different data, so you can play around a lot with this. I really like this. Random names, two. It's data set generation, not really, I don't really need to generate random usernames. Not as interesting as I was hoping, but still fine, I guess. Stats two data, I'm giving this five acorns out of five. It's a great collection of data sets, and I'm always looking for good sets of data to be able to run examples and play around with, so this was aces, Charles, in my book. USA, I'm giving it a four. It's a really great data set for geographical, ecological studies. I've used this, in fact, before, so it's good in my book. Okay, let's round out this issue with a little fun. We're going to take a look at the package, continue the theme of data sets, continue the package, Pixar Films. Let's have a little fun with Pixar Films. Now, in addition to loading in Pixar Films, you're going to need to load in these additional packages to run the code out below. So if you haven't loaded those in yet, do so, please. Let's take a look at and start by viewing Pixar films. So we start with Toy Story all the way down to, in fact, they have the most recent one, Luca, as well as some upcoming ones that they don't have information for yet. So that's what we have to work with here. So first we're going to make this uh, data frame. Don't worry too much about it. It's just going to run. And we're going to do stuff to create a nice graph of ratings across time and by time measured by the different films. That should pop up here. And look, looky there. You can see Critics, Choice, Metacritic, and Rotten Tomatoes ratings as they go over time. It seems like the biggest sort of Dives, <laughs> turns out it was when Cars came out, so a lot of these credits didn't like that, but generally pretty high ranking. Okay, let's go back and round things out with our talk. Well, well, thank you for joining me. Next time, we'll have issue four, which will delve into interactive tutorials, including General Interactive and Learner Learn Stats MLR Shiny 2 and Stat 2, and then the more swirl side of things with Swirl and Swirlify. Have a great day.